Locked On Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Locked On Blues Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network and your number one source for daily blues content. I'm Josh Hyman, and today I'm going to be taking you guys on a solo episode as Tommy is still feeling a little under the weather. Um, he let me know, though, that he should be back on episodes starting next week on Monday. Uh, so hopefully if things go according to plan, I'll be taking another solo episode tomorrow, Friday, and then Tommy will be back with us on Monday. So I know you, some of you guys are worried about that. Um, he should be should be back on the pod pretty soon. A um, couple of things to touch on today. I'm going to be talking about a little bit more about Jordan Bennington's um, eventual return to the St. Louis Blues. Um, question of whether or not there's a goalie controversy has been going around Twitter a little bit uh, with the play of some of the backups as of late. So I'm going to be getting into that. David Perron looking like, is looking like he might be entering back into the Blues lineup. As uh, as of pretty pretty soon this week, next week, um, and then there have been some trade rumors revolving around Jacob Chikorin. Uh, a lot of a lot of people want to see Jacob Chikorin join the Blues on a potential trade. I'm going to be talking about all that and more. Uh, but first, I want to thank anyone and everyone out there who is making us your first listen. We really appreciate you know anyone who wakes up. Uh, throws an episode of Lockdown Blues on all with their morning cup of coffee, their commute to work or school. You've heard me talk about it before, but it really, truly drives a lot of our traffic is so many of you guys listening to us first thing in the morning. So we really appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> before I get into today's episode, a few little housekeeping notes. I think for the future moving forward, um, the YouTube live streams of these episodes are going to end. Unfortunately, it's just not uh, at the time capable. We're not capable of maintaining the quality uh when we use the live streams it takes a little bit too much bandwidth and the audio and the video gets a little screwed up so it really uh pains me to say that because i enjoyed the online content so much or the live content so much i loved talking in the chat with everybody j tap greg kane um i'm forgetting other names right now but those are the some of the classics uh some of the ogs from day one i know you guys and you guys will be commenting too so we're going to be interacting with people in the comments and stuff on youtube it's not going to be too much too different we're going to start to do more mailbag uh on twitter that way you guys can get involved just like you were um with the live streams but unfortunately until um we figure out a solution with the connection i just don't think we gonna be able to do that um moving forward uh, to some blues talk jordan Bennington is returning for the st louis blues imminently maybe not right away um, as the Blues do want to get him up the full speed, get him sort of reintegrated with the roster before they just throw him into the fire. So might see Charlie Lindgren um, once or twice again before we see Bennington come back. But the reason I wanted to bring this up again, even though I talked about Jordan Bennington a lot yesterday, is because I saw a lot of people on Twitter <clears throat> debating whether or not that there's a goalie controversy for the St. Louis Blues. Whether or not the performances of Billy Huso, um, Charlie Lindgren, and even John Gillies point to the fact that maybe Jordan Bennington doesn't have this starting spot as short up as we may have thought at the beginning of the season. Um, I think there's certainly weight behind that argument. Um, you know, we've seen Charlie Lindgren look like one of the strongest goalies the Blues have had this season, if not the strongest goalie the Blues have had this season in his very limited minutes. But the reasoning behind that isn't because he's a better goalie than Jordan Bennington. I think he's a great goalie, and he's probably going to be our backup here for um, a couple games moving forward. So I'm really glad that the Blues have him um, in that position. I think he can do a really, really good job when he's needed. But I think the majority of the blame, or not blame, but the majority of the responsibility of the performance of the goaltenders isn't the goaltenders, it's the defense. Um, not that John Gillies and Charlie Lindgren and Billy Huso, you know, when called upon have been great. I just think the defense has played so much better hockey since um, Bennington went down and since everyone started going down into COVID and injury. I think the defense, like I was talking about yesterday, was really just put in a position where um, they were forced to put up or shut up, where it was really, you know, the spotlight was put on them and it was it reached the point where if the defense faltered, this team was going to have a really, really hard time having success just with the goaltending depth being as barren as it was and with the forward depth taking such a major hit, um, 
Prussia really went on to the defense to perform, and they did. And I think that that's why the goalies had such an easy time, not to say that Lindgren and Gillies and Huso haven't been amazing in their performances because they have. Um, I just think that a big part of that is due to the Blues playing a really sound defensive game um, that they haven't really been playing all season. And because of that, I am really, really stoked to see how that impacts Jordan Bennington because, you know, he's had to deal with some games where the defense has definitely left them hung out to dry. And we've definitely seen times where, you know, he hasn't performed in those games and the Blues have lost. But we also saw a lot of games this season where the defense of the St. Louis Blues was playing really, really poorly and Jordan Bennington stole a win. So for him to be playing that well as well as he was before he went down, um, with the defense playing sort of as poorly as they were, makes me think that when he comes back, he's going to have a really strong resurgence um, and play even better. You know, uh, just take the he he's he's not an idiot. He knows that the goalies played well when he was out, and he knows that there's a little bit of pressure on him to get back up to full speed. But if I'm Jordan Bennington, I'm so excited right now watching the way the defense has looked over these past few games in comparison to what they looked like when Bennington was in net. If I'm Jordan Bennington, I am over the moon and happiness about the way that the defense has been playing lately. I cannot wait to get in between the pipes to, to, you know, prove myself in front of a more sound defense now. And I think it's only going to do good things for this team. Um, having a guy like Charlie Lindgren, who might be the backup for, you know, the time being, depending on the severity of Huso's injury. Um, it's a good thing for the blues, you know, too much goaltending is never a bad thing. You know, who knows if, if playoff time comes around, injuries happen one way or another, the blues could realistically be looking at some of these backups for a for a, a significant push later in the season. You know, Bennington isn't a guarantee to stay, you know, the starting goalie just purely based on health for the rest of the season. Not that I am predicting an injury or anything like that, but it's very nice to know that the Blues have this quality um, at the goaltending position. Do I think there's a goaltending controversy? Absolutely not. Jordan Bennington has proven time and time and again why he's the starting goalie for this team. And it just so happens that when he goes down, the defense sort of gets their act together and maybe makes life a little bit easier for the other goaltenders in this in this organization to really show what they can do. But that's only going to do good things for Jordan Bennington. He's only going to play better because of that. Um, speaking of guys playing better, David Perron seems like he is right around the corner from his return to the St. Louis Blues, uh, participating fully in practice and more so. I'm going to be talking about him, what he can bring to the team, and sort of the, the forward core, uh, what that might look like when this team is fully healthy. But before I get into that, because that'll be in the second segment, so make sure you stay tuned. I want to tell you guys about Stat Hero. Now, if you're like me, you like playing a little bit of daily fantasy, whether it's football, hockey, whatever, what have you. Um, daily fantasy is so fun. It's not as long, much of a long-term commitment as a full season of fantasy football, but it's just as exhilarating. And one thing that is universally true is nobody plays daily fantasy sports to lose. Winning feels so much better, but traditional fantasy sports are a long-term losing proposition because you never know who or what, you up, what you're up against. But Stat Hero is the first of its kind daily fantasy sports platform where it is you versus a house in a head-to-head -head fantasy matchup. Winner takes all. And here's the crazy part. Stat Hero shows you their lineups before you play, and you can handpick the team that you want to face one-on-one. -on -one. This never-before-seen innovation of a fantasy sports and sports betting hybrid has Stat Hero players clocking odds that are over four times better than competitors. Why? Because you don't have to compete against thousands of experts or unknowns. Stat Hero puts you in control of your fate. With Stat Hero, you're in complete control of the stakes. You decide how much you're going to play for, and Stat Hero has no choice but to take it because they're daring you to beat them. Stat Hero is head-to-head. -head is what daily fantasy should be, one-on-one. -on -one. So you can sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash hockey and use promo code hockey for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash hockey. Don't forget to use promo code hockey for a 100% match. One more time, stathero.com slash hockey. Promo code hockey, terms and conditions apply, and I'll be right back. All right, so the St. Louis Blues are getting a little bit stronger by adding Jordan Binnington back into the lineup here pretty soon. Uh, but another name that has been missing from the lineup for a while now, not due to COVID-related issues, but due to an upper body injury, is David Perron. David Perron took a little bit of a bump to the head a couple of weeks ago, and with his concussion history, it was a huge concern. You know, all throughout Blues Nation, just worrying that, um, you know, this was going to be another long-term injury for him. And 
they blues have been very patient with getting him back up to speed. You know, he started skating a week or two ago. Um, Ruby didn't really allude too much to his status. He got put on long-term injury reserve a couple of days ago, just purely for cap related reasons. Um, and basically the attitude amongst the blues was they're just going to take this slowly. You know, Peron's a guy with concussion history. You don't want to rush that back. You don't want to risk him having another head injury this season because once you get one, once you get two, once you get three, like he's had, I believe, um, it's a lot easier to accrue them afterwards. So the blues want to make sure that he's fully healthy, even if he seems, you know, like he's doing well, the way that concussions work, he can be doing really well one, two, three days. And all of a sudden that fourth day, the symptoms return and you're still one or two steps away. So I was happy to see the blues being as patient with him as they were. Obviously, you know, you never want to see a guy like David Perron go down with an injury, but having the forwards play as well as they were and the offense playing as well as they were, I think probably took a little bit of pressure off getting Perron back um, and made it pretty easy for Baruby and the rest of the organization to just say, you know, give him as much time as he needs. Um, he's a guy that's given so much to this organization in the past, left the Blues twice, returned to them, um, suffered a few concussions, whatever, what have you. Um, seeing him, you know, go down with another injury like that is terrifying. And I'm glad that we've been able to give him, you know, not we've been able to, but we've been able to see him take the time that he needs to potentially return to this lineup. Um, but that being said, with the way it's looking, this return for David Perron could happen sooner rather than later, as he is participating, I believe, in full contact three-on-three drills at practice. Um, from what I saw, meaning his return could be right around the corner. I'm really, really stoked to see that. I think it goes into a similar vein of what I was talking about with Jordan Bennington is any guy that's returning to this lineup is going to have such a little pressure on them because of how well this team has been playing. It's really just going to hopefully be excuse me, a seamless transition for a lot of these guys. You know, it would be one thing if the, if the team was struggling and, you know, fingers were pointed at David Braun, like, man, this offense has really been, you know, having a hard time producing ever since Perron went down. But, oh, great, he's back. You know, the offense should be great now. That's a lot of pressure if you're David Perron and if you're the St. Louis Blues to just think that, you know, one player coming back to the lineup can sort of flip the, flip the switch um, and improve the play, you know, that drastically. But fortunately for the Blues, they're not in that situation. You know, they've been playing such good hockey without so many key guys that, you know, whether it's Justin Falk a few games ago, Tyler Bozak, Jordan Bennington, David Perron, Robert Thomas, Jordan Cairo, the list goes on and on and on of guys that are out of the lineup right now who, you know, in their return – we'll be able to look at the performance of this team and be like, oh, awesome. I can just slide right in. I don't have to do anything special. I don't have to turn this team around at all. You know, I'm stoked to jump back in and, and, you know, continue to ride off the success of this team. Because like I said, if I'm, I was talking about earlier, if I'm Jordan Bennington, well, if I'm Jordan Cairo or Robert Thomas, yeah, I'm injured. And, and, you know, I'm not trying to rush back, but I'm also looking at the way this team is playing. And I cannot wait to get back into the lineup because this Blues team is playing great hockey right now. And, you know, being able to come back into a lineup that's playing this fluidly, this consistently is is a blessing for these guys. You know, y- you hope that the chemistry works out, um, and I think it will. You know, I think it'll be a pretty seamless transition. We saw it with Falk. You know, the defense only got better. With Bennington, I'm not too worried about that. With David Perron, you know, it might shuffle up the offensive lines a little bit, but, you know, as long as that Russian connection line is still together, um, that's going to do beautiful things for this Blues offense. But any forward on this team or any player on this team that has been out of the lineup consistently can hopefully, you know, look at the performance of this team and know that they're coming back to a really good situation that the Blues might have really started to put the pieces together for a successful long-term season, you know, with a deep playoff run. Um, and having that occur while the, the lineup was so beaten and battered um, is huge for this team. You know, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that they're, the Blues are 6-1-2 and two over the last nine games and have used four different goaltenders in that span. I think it's because beyond the personnel that they're putting out there, the Blues are just really playing a sound game of hockey. Um, the forward core, you know, the way that they're playing hasn't changed much, but the defense is just night and day compared to where it was at the beginning of the season. Um, and because of that, it's just been so much easier for everybody. It's been easier for the defense because, you know, like I was saying in earlier episodes, they can jump up in the play a little bit more. It's been easier on the forwards because they're a little bit more comfortable in their zone. They're a little bit more comfortable with the breakout. They're not scrambling. And it's been so much easier on the goaltenders. We've seen that out of Charlie Lindgren and Billy Huso and John Gillies that they've been playing great hockey, not just because they're great goaltenders, because they are, but because this defense has been playing such strong hockey for the Blues that, 
know, it, it's, it's made life so much easier. So these guys come back into the lineup, Jordan Binnington, um, David Perron, eventually Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas, it's only going to make this team stronger. It's only going to add to the snowball of momentum that the Blues are building right now because 6-1-2 and two over the last nine games, given the circumstances, is beyond my wildest dreams at the beginning of that stretch. Um, and as all the injuries were happening, I was saying there's no way they can keep this up. There's no way they're not going to, they're, they're going to fall through at some point. They have to, and they, they proved me wrong. So there's no reason to believe that adding these names to the lineup won't continue to strengthen the blues this season because they have grown so much as a team over the past few weeks, just maybe due to this adversity, just due to figuring it out. But the blues team that we see in front of us, you know, over these past few games is so much improved compared to the team we saw at the beginning of the season. And yes, that's the team at the beginning of the season that started out undefeated and was, you know, breaking records, franchise records. Um, I think this team that we've seen lately is a more complete team than that, just in terms of all ends of the ice. And they've been doing that at like 50% health. So I am so stoked to see what they can do moving forward. Um, That being said, though, there is a little trade rumor I want to get into in the third segment. A lot of people were talking about Jacob Chikorin uh, being on the block and a name that they would like to see in St. Louis. I personally, I don't know if I'm too too much on that bandwagon right now. I'm going to tell you guys why. But first, I want to tell you about another sponsor, and that is Primal Origin Oils. If you or someone you care about has a beard, it needs to get primal. Maybe you're that guy who has never considered the benefits of treating your beard with a product. Primal Origin Oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. The products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients and with low impact on our planet. Primal Origin Oils makes bombs, oils, and whipped butter that are renowned as the best feel in beard products available. All products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the USA. The combo kits make a great holiday gift, and if you're shopping for yourself, you'll be glad that you did. We know that every company claims to have the best, but Primal Origin Oils truly challenges you to compare their ingredients and feel in beard to other products you've used. We promise you will see and feel the difference. Remember, the code Locked On gets you 20% off at PrimalOriginOils.com. Use code Locked On at the checkout for 20% off, and I'll be right back with today's episode. Perfect time for someone to drive by on a motorcycle. Um, all right, we are back with the third segment of today's episode. Um, Jacob Chikorin, a name that has been potentially on the block, a name that a lot of people would love to see in a Blues uniform. Um, I would obviously love to see Jacob Chikorin on the Blues. Let me just get that off the bat. I think the defense still has a hole to fill um, personnel-wise. I would like to see one more name on that defense, just in that top four. Um but that being said, you know, I don't think it's as urgent as it was at the beginning of the season. And because of that, and because of what I think the price would be, I don't think the Blues can afford to make a move that big right now. Um, because getting a guy like Jacob Chikrin, you know, who's on a bit of a longer term deal, who would be part of this team for years moving forward, you're going to need to, for lack of a better term, gut this team. Um, there's going to be a lot of, you know, picks and prospects involved for sure. But. You know, you got to assume that there are a couple roster players going out. You got to assume that that might start with, you know, if if on the other end, that might start with asking for a guy like Robert Thomas and Jordan Cairo. And I don't think the Blues should or would trade either of those two. But if that's the starter for conversations, that means it's turning into maybe an Ivan Barbashev, maybe a Scott Perunovich. You know, maybe all you're doing is taking one or two guys out of the roster and adding Jacob Chikrin. And with the way that this team has been playing and as strong as this offense has looked and also how evident it has been that the blues are going to need depth. I don't think it makes sense to completely gut this team right now to bring in one guy. Um, you know, maybe, maybe it would be solely based in picks and prospects and it's just one name on the forward core going out. But even then, you know, with the way that this forward group has played and with the resurgence of the defense lately, I don't think you make a panic move for Jacob Chikorin right now, because I do think that's what it would be. I think it would be a bit of a panic move. I think if you're looking at this defense, you're saying we really need a piece. Um, Jacob Chikorin is a great option. You know, he's a really good long-term option for the St. Louis Blues as well. It's not like he's a rental, um, but I think it would be a panic move just based on how much it would cost. I don't think that the Blues are in a position right now where they can really mortgage that much of their current success on a guy that would be coming in and trying to fit into a new team because if Jacob Chikorin doesn't fit right away, then you're sort of right back where you were at the beginning of the season where you still need time to gel. You still need this time for this defense to gel. And 
the Stevens has been playing so much better lately that I don't know if bringing a new guy in is <clears throat> going to be too much of a needle mover. And if it is a needle mover, will it move the needle in the right direction more than losing a forward moves the needle in the wrong direction? I don't know if that's the case. You know, a guy like Jacob Chikorin isn't going to cost more than just a couple picks. You're going to need to send a big name player the other way if you're the St. Louis Blues. I don't know if Clem Costin is enough. That's a name that's been tossed around a lot. I don't think Clem Costin is enough. I think it's going to be maybe an Ivan Barbashev. You know, Jordan Cairo and Robert Thomas would be the starters. I assume in that in that trade, I think the Blues would say no to that. But and then you say, okay, if not them, then like I said, Barbashev or Perunovic or some other big name for the St. Louis Blues that I think you know, even as great as Jacob Chikrin would be for this team, I don't know if it's worth it right now with the current state of the team to make a move that big. I would love to see them circle back in the off season, maybe um, if Vladimir Tarasenko still wants to be moved. I see a perfect scenario there um we can get into that a little bit later you know down the line when if and when that that conversation needs to happen but as far as right now i don't think the blues should make a big try to make a big splash like that at the trade deadline necessarily um but things could change you know things could change i don't rule it out in its entirety and if the blues can pull it off without like i said gutting their team then absolutely i'm all for it um that being said i do think it's a little bit risky so i need to err on the side of caution in that case But who knows? You know, things could change at the drop of a hat. We've seen that over the past few weeks of Blues hockey. Things have changed so quickly in terms of guys staying healthy, guys going down with injury, with COVID, what have you. Fifth string goalies playing out of their mind. It's been a roller coaster here. And we have it all covered for you here on the Locked On Blues podcast. But that being said, I think that is all the time I have today for you guys. So I want to thank everybody so much for listening. Make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you listen to us on. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube at Locked On Blues. Hit that notification bell. That way, whenever we post a new episode, you can be the first one to watch it so you can get the news, the content when it's still piping hot. Make sure you follow us on all of our socials at Locked On Blues on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Follow my Twitter at Josh Hyman NHL. Look at that perfect point, kind of. Um, I'll get better. I'll, someday I'm going to get this right. Someday I'm going to get this right. If you're watching on YouTube, someday I'm going to be pointing right at my username. Um, So thanks, everyone, so much for watching on YouTube and listening and all that good stuff and more. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Josh Hammond NHL. Like I said, follow Tommy at TWelcher15. Make sure you wish him well because he should be feeling better here soon. Thanks, everyone, so much for listening. And as always, let's go Blues.